connected with Iran, every possible reason for worry in the future would have to be confronted now. That's precisely why it should be confronted now. This is precisely why Iran should be confronted now when they are relatively weak. They know that. And the appeasing cowards in the Obama administration have capitulated to the worst terrorist nation on the earth exactly, exactly for that reason. They're passing the buck to future generations of leadership. They're selling us out to Iran now. The Obama-Iran axis of evil has just been exposed for what they really are. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Life is good. People are wonderful and business is great. Welcome to the Savage Nation. We live in such depressing times that when you hear an optimist like Donald Trump, it lifts your spirits. I mean, listen to what I just said to you. The others are so depressing to listen to. And I hear the standard attacks on Donald Trump. Now, standard operating procedure is to say this and that about Trump, and I hear the same repeated lies over and over again. And I'm a champion of Trump. I'll be very honest with you. I like the man. I've only met him a few times personally. Full disclosure, I'm a member of the Mar-a-Lago country club that he owns in Florida, but I don't go there. I go to Florida about a week a year. I go to the club about once a year. Twice a year, that's about it. And when he's there, I say hello, he says hello. There's no, nothing else between us, nothing else at all. I just know that he could turn this country around. I've been in the business long enough to know that it takes charisma as well as ideas to change the course of a nation. Look at what this charismatic left-wing fanatic has done to this country and the world. And look at what this charismatic left-wing phony Obama is about to do to the world by giving Iran a bomb. Take a look at what's going to happen. So, you know, my next big book is called Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. And I hope after it comes out and establishes itself as a document in this nation, Trump becomes president the following year, and we can change the title to whoever writes the book, because I'm not writing anymore after that. It'll be a dog book after that, and maybe a book on health. That's about it. I'm through. I've done my job. By the way, he said something interesting right at the beginning. He said that he's going to hire Carl Icahn, as one of his negotiators. Now, did you hear that on the show? I hadn't heard that on any other radio or television show. Now, for those of you who know about the legendary Carl Icahn, my God, would I love to have Carl Icahn sitting across the table from those wonderful friends of ours in China? And there's a lot more to be said for, uh, for, the, for the government that uh, Donald Trump would, uh, would bring in. He'd strike down the anchor baby's law, point eight of the Savage Manifesto, eliminate the loophole in our law that encourages illegal immigrants to enter this country for the purpose of having anchor babies or U.S. citizens simply because they happen to have been born in our hospitals. That's point number eight of my of my 37-point uh, plan. I'm the architect of much of what you're hearing from conservatives today. Whether they admit it or not doesn't matter to me. Whether they even know it came from my book doesn't matter to me. All I know is that their script writers have read my work. And I wrote this 37-point Savage Manifesto, English only, close the borders, defend the borders, defund and repeal Obamacare, reduce the size and scope of government, liquidate TARP, oil for illegals, strike down anchor babies law, export jailed illegal aliens. Point 11, Michael Savage, use profiling to prevent terror attacks. So, you know, you say, am I being specific enough or am I just a bombastic radio host? Well, you can have it any way you want. If you want to paint me as a bombastic radio host who is an ignoramus, you can do that. But if you dare take the time to read any of my books, my most recent is Stop the Coming Civil War. I'm reading now from Trickle Up Poverty. My next book will be Government Zero. You will see the greatest mind of our generation in the history of politics sitting right before this microphone. And I'm going to say it because no one else will. It's that simple. Do I get the credit for that? Has anyone ever said that? I am the man that everyone's copied in this business, everyone. And I give you specifics in my books. I generalize on the radio, I'll admit it. The radio is a different medium than the written word. You have to use a different rhetoric on the radio than in the written word. You have to speak in broad strokes on the radio to keep the audience listening, to communicate with a mass audience, you use a different language structure. It's a very complicated, very complicated difference between the written word and the spoken word 
which is why when a person reads something, even from their own books, which I have done, it comes across wrong on radio. I can hear it. I've got the ears that can hear what sounds right and what sounds wrong from my own voice. If I read from my own books, it doesn't sound right on the radio because it doesn't sound clean. It doesn't read correctly. The, the syntax is wrong. So anyway, you know, you can get what you want out of me. You want to paint me as one thing, you can do so, but you'd be wrong. You want to really understand me? You really want to understand my genius? Then you read my books. Until then, keep your mouth shut because you're just showing your own ignorance. You're not showing your intelligence by shooting your mouth off and saying Michael Savage is this, Michael Savage is that, when you either never read one of my books or never heard one of my shows. Gigantic, federalized police force reporting to Al Sharpton. Can you imagine? You say it can't happen here? Well, my friends, wake up. It happened while you were here. Now let's go to my time in America. This would never have happened in my time when I was a kid. If a cop was shot in New York City when I was a boy, the entire city would come to a halt. And at the time, there were, what, 20 or 30,000 police? Every cop, whether they were off duty or on duty, would be called in, and there'd be an around-the-clock manhunt. And moreover, the underworld would put their own resources to finding that cop killer because they understood that it was very bad for business. And so even the underworld, the criminals work with the cops to get the cop killer. The, the criminals, the real criminals or the real criminal organizations never, ever shot a cop. And when they did find them, let me tell you something. There was no bleeding heart lawyer from NYU or Columbia telling us about the bad childhood the cop killer had. Let me tell you something else. If we don't go back to the times uh, that I lived in, there'll be no times for you to live in at all. Michael Savage wrote Stop the Coming Civil War a year ago. I warned you that Obama had an intention. And he has conducted a civil war against all civil aspects of this society from the day he seized power. From the day he was foisted upon us by forces we will never ever comprehend. This man has had a vendetta against the institutions that have made this nation great. And one of the institutions that stands in the way of his total and complete takeover of this nation are the local police forces in the country. He has already decapitated the military, which is why they're not fighting ISIS. There's some grumbling down below the colonel level from those who say we could have knocked ISIS out in a week, but no one's asking questions in the media, are they, Mr. Roger Ailes, as to why the President of the United States is not taking down ISIS, not yet a subject on the great Fox News network. I dismiss all the other networks because they were dismissed by the American people of uh, a thinking nature a long time ago. But the last link that we had of any hope was the Fox News network until it was destroyed completely in the recent past by a new management uh, and a new management style. It is now the CNN of our time. They will not ask the real questions, which is why is there a war on the police? Did Obama's rhetoric have anything to do with it? Why is ISIS still functioning? Why have, uh, why is the U.S. military never, ever, ever uh, been given the targets of the training camps to, to attack? Uh, the U.S. Air Force could eliminate these training camps in a very, very short period of time, killing everybody in them or destroying them so they're useless. We even know where the camps are. I saw a map of them the other day. And yet your president, the commander in chief, will not offer a strike against them. I see it as clear as a bell. There is no doubt in my mind that this is a, an orchestrated war against the police that was triggered by the man in the White House. And I'm not asking anyone to agree or disagree. That is my opinion. It's that simple. I don't need any confirmation for what I see to be real. How do you like that? I'm not going to pretend that I really don't know what's going on. And I need your opinion. I don't really need your opinion. I understand exactly what happened. I know that this maniac wants this to happen. Oh, I don't mean actually kill police. I know he gave some heartfelt uh, statement last night about, let's see, which cop killing was that one? Hmm. Oh, the one in, in Texas, that's right. When that white cop was shot in the back of the head by a black man. Yeah, I think even Obama had to come up from the ice cream and give a speech on that one. Well, now he's up in Alaska renaming mountains for um, political purposes. You understand what he's doing up there, don't you? He's a community organizer. He's organizing the Inuits who don't vote to make sure that they vote for a Democrat, socialist, Islamist uh, from here on into the future. Do you understand what he's doing? He's agitating in Alaska. And so, again, 
here we are. Cops are dead. Another one dead. All because of the individuals I mentioned. I wake up today saying I'm not going to do it again. And then I wake up to this manhunt underway north of Chicago for three suspects in the murder of a police officer, armed gunman, uh, traffic stop, shot him, stole his gun, stole his gear, and ran into the woods. No pictures yet of, of any of them. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they look like. They're described as two white males and one black male. But further than that, we don't know. Let's hope that there were some body cameras or helmet cameras uh, in that department, which will show it, show who they are. And now there's a manhunt for the killers of another cop. And the reason there's open season on cops is because of the war on police that was started by Barack Obama, Eric Holder, who was then attorney general and now is enjoying a multi-million dollar a year reward for his great work as a lawyer. Al Sharpton, the street thug, uh, turned national political hero by Obama and others who have called for a war on police. So criminals are no longer afraid of police for two reasons. They know that the police are intimidated by the vermin lawyers from NYU and Columbia who will put a policeman in jail for doing his job. You see, the new rule in America is the cop is hesitating, and as you well know, if you hesitate with a bad guy, you're going to lose. It's that simple. Well, that's exactly what Obama and Holder and Sharpton, de Blasio, and others have wanted. And now there's a war on police who are reluctant to draw their gun, reluctant to take down a criminal for fear of a lawsuit by the vermin rats in the ACLU, all of whom should be deported and all of their assets seized, in my opinion. But you ought to thank God I'm only a talk show host with very strong and loud opinions. You ought to thank God I have no power in this country because the first thing I would do is decouple the ACLU from the legal system. That is the first thing that needs to be done. Decouple these communist rats from the legal system. Were they ever elected? Did you ever go to a polling place and were you given an option to vote for these communist anti-American vermin, these anti-Christian lawyers, these anti-American lawyers? Have you ever been given that option? And yet they're more powerful than the Supreme Court in determining which way this nation goes. One of the first things I would do is I would immediately indict them for various crimes and let them defend themselves. That's the first thing I would do. But I'm not a presidential candidate. I'm only a talk show host. It's one man's opinion. Never forget that. So Obama's up in Alaska renaming uh, mountains and uh, putting out the fraudulent information about global warming in order to push that lie. I'll give you a little evidence to that effect if you're a, a doubter about what I'm saying to you. He's up there talking about global warming and how uh, the world's coming to an end melting sea ice and this and that. And at the same time, story on CNN says Obama wants new Coast Guard icebreakers in the Arctic. So I, I scratched my head and said, wait a minute, if all the ice is melting because of global warming, I, I thought, why does their uh, leader, dear leader, need new icebreakers? Because he's a liar. That's all, a liar and a fraud. And it's as simple as that. See, the United States once had seven icebreakers in its fleet. But now because the military has been downsized and deballed, it has only two icebreakers that are functional. Russia has 40 icebreakers, with 11 more planned on the construction. And so, Presidente will call on Congress to approve funding for replacing a new heavy icebreaker by 2020. Now, what does he need icebreakers for? They're designed to cut through open water ice, and are in high demand as industries push closer to exploration of either of the Earth's poles, according to the Coast Guard. So in other words, the glaciers are melting, they're going to disappear, the uh, animals are going to all die, but they need icebreakers anyway. Uh, which one is true, Mr. Obama? The answer is, can you ever get the truth out of a skilled liar, a rhetorician like him? But let's go back to the war on police, which he triggered, in order to make certain that police resign Police are intimidated. His, his, uh, his thugs are empowered in the streets. Do you understand how dangerous this is for you, the average citizen? I was recently in New York, what, two weeks ago. And on the surface, New York is a beautiful city. But right under the surface, there is a menacing presence that can be felt by anyone who has a nervous system. Right under the surface, there are the guys with the cups shaking the cups in your face. 
right outside 